All right, Vic, how about we kick this thing off? Sounds good. All right, hello everybody, and welcome to our weekly 30-minute workshop. Thank you for being here. My name is Trey Gonzalez. I'm a product manager here at Verify, and I'll be your host for today's live webinar. Uh, we're joined by my good buddy, Victor Verba, systems engineer over here at Verify. How are you doing today, Vic? I am doing good, man. I'm doing good, man. Stoked. We got a lot coming up. I know. Big week for us, huh? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, for today's session, we're going to cover our brand new call scenario search types. Now, I'm really excited about this as one of the product managers behind the scenes. It's great to see how this feature alone can save our customers a ton of time and also how it actually opens the door for even more impactful features in the future. Um, you'll actually have access to this brand new feature as well as all the other unreleased features we've discussed this month on tomorrow, June 29th for the public release of Verify 15.1. And you can download the update tomorrow at verify.com slash support slash download. Again, that'll be available on the 29th. Um, and we wanna give a quick thank you to anybody who's been waiting patiently for this release. We do appreciate your time and are very proud to finally have it out in the public for you to use. Now, I had the pleasure of being able to work with Vic and the rest of the team behind the scenes on today's topic, so I couldn't be more proud to finally present the call scenarios as search types for you all live today. Uh, but first, let me walk you through the agenda for today's webinar. We're gonna kick it off with a quick overview about Verify and what it is we do. Then we'll jump right into the demo where Victor will demonstrate and showcase the brand new search types. And after the demo, we'll pause for Q&A, get some of your questions answered. So during the demo, if you have any questions, please be sure, excuse me, to ask them in the chat panel. I'll be monitoring those and I'll be sure to get all those questions answered towards the end. Uh, lastly, we're gonna reward one lucky attendee with a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang tight till the end, just to see if you may have won. Now a little bit about us, to verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for UC Analytics. We provide industry-leading dashboards and call reporting for uh, Cisco Unified Communication Manager, Cisco Contact Center Express, Cisco Cubes, now Zoom Phone, and we recently added support for WebEx Calling Analytics. We support all these platforms alongside a suite of management tools, such as remote phone control, macros, change management, and DID management, which are all focused towards CUCM, Cisco Call Manager. But today we're gonna to be focusing on the new call scenario search types, so if you have any questions about any of the other features I listed, or if you simply have an interest in taking them out for a test drive, please feel free to message us in the chat panel, or if you're already part of the Verify community, you can just reach out to your Verify account manager for that information. One more thing before we kick off, Verify does offer a managed consulting service where our systems engineers uh, team engages with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We remotely provide consulting, unassisted reporting, dashboarding, configuration, and system monitoring assistance. Again, this is a service that provides you a dedicated Verify systems engineer to do all of the heavy lifting for you, giving you a completely hands-off experience. For more information on that, please contact us. We'd be glad to speak more in depth about these managed services. Now it's time to get into the demo. Vic, do you mind sharing? All right, here we go. You know, make sure I got my right screen here. All right, excellent. Hello, everybody, and thank you guys for joining us. Uh, again, super psyched to be able to get 15.1 out the door. Like Dre had said, that'll be expected out tomorrow um, with quite a few improvements that we've made um, with our uh, CUCM analytics, as well as uh, really kind of the gambit from whether you're a Zoom customer, a WebEx customer, a call manager customer, uh, there's a little something in that guy for everybody. So what we're here to talk a little bit about today is uh, the new option to be able to filter on call scenarios. So I'm going to go ahead and start off and talk a little bit about what is a call scenario. Call scenarios are different summary type values that have been um, really created or derived by Verify to, to provide you know, the business analytics that you guys are all used to with Verify. Um, that's the summary analytics. That's things like, very easily can show you here, a call scenario, things like abandoned calls, authenticated calls, connected calls. These are all different scenarios that Verify creates using different parts of the data um, to provide you better analytics. Um, so you know, rather than uh, 
you know, uh, uh, plowing through CDR or data, trying to figure out what is, you know, what consists of an abandoned call, what what makes an answered call, what makes a connected or non-connected call or long duration or short duration call. Um, what Verify does is we understand the Cisco data. So we're able to derive these call scenarios based on different pieces of that data and output that in a report. Now, one of the things that we've had throughout the years is a lot of customers coming back to and asking us, well, you know, okay, um, can you show me just the abandoned calls? Can you show me what is a connected call? What is an answered call? Um, can we just pick those out of the data? And of course we could. We had a lot of different ways to do it because it is all being derived from the data. So what we would do is we would come in and we would build multiple filters. Um, you know, what what several fields are, are uh, contained in an abandoned call and how do we recognize that? So something that was, we were very capable of doing by building out multiple uh, filters in here and, and just building a report based off of those. Uh, but it could get cumbersome um, because, you know, not everybody wanted to go through the data. Um, not everybody had a total understanding of the data that the way that we do. So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about um, how this is going to benefit us. Um, one of the cool things that I found right off the bat and something that we do a lot um, is, is we have a lot of folks that come to us and just say, hey, I need to see all the calls for yesterday or today or this week. Um, and in Verify, anybody that's familiar with Verify, you know, there was a pretty easy way for us to do that. It, you know, <clears throat> it wasn't a hard thing for us to do. Um, in the first place, we would come down, pick a field similar to this, um, just do something like, you know, ends with a capital X. Um, this is essentially going to capture all my calls for the previous week, and we'll see, I don't know, a few thousand calls in there. Um, so this is one way to be able to gather that data. Um, it's not the most efficient because you're still focusing in on number fields. We have to check those number fields for digits and things like that. So cool thing about call scenarios, and I'm going to introduce you to our new feature here, is the ability to do exactly that type of thing. But rather than having to rely on multiple parts of the data, um, what consists or what makes up an abandoned call, or in this case, what makes up the total calls, um, we've added call scenarios. So under our search type here, um, you know, you'll see that everything that you that you're used to seeing is still here. But if you come in here and you type in scenario um, or just SC and you're going to see a new analytics filter type for call scenarios. All right. Once you add that to your search criteria, you're going to notice what we've done is we've taken all those different scenarios and we broke them down into singular categories. So essentially what we've done is we've taken the logic that makes up those summary values and given you the ability, the ability to filter on those directly. So it's a huge advantage and a huge time saver. So, so anybody that's really wanted to isolate just those abandoned calls or just those total calls or just those queued calls, rather than having to determine through the data what is a queued call or what is an abandoned call, you can easily just select those values directly from the UI. So I'm going to start off with our total calls because that's what I was just kind of picking on. So once I look at total calls, essentially what we're doing is we're not relying on the different pieces of data, which is how we used to do it before. We would come through and we would say, okay, is there a digit in this field? Is there a digit in this field? And we would return the results. Now, rather than having to look through all those different data fields to determine uh, total volume of calls, you can see we've got 14,977 uh, 14, calls, and all we did was choose our call scenarios type to include total calls. Much simpler search, much quicker search, and it honestly makes a little bit more sense than having to rely on digit fields when we can just rely on a total volume. So that's one scenario, like once I saw that, I was, I was pretty stoked because we do a lot of reporting where it's just, you know, show me everything or I need to see everything and then pick out different parts of those calls. So this is a very easy way to be able to go ahead and break down all your, all your calls for a certain time period. Um, but there's quite a few uses here. We're not done yet. Um, so looking at the total calls, I'm going to go ahead and run something that I know a lot of our customers are doing, and that's those hunt group reports. Um, and I found this to be a great way to really filter down some of those hunt group values. Um, but keep in mind, this is not strictly for hunt groups. Um, this could be a departmental report, an organizational report, or really any report that you're running. Essentially, what we're doing is you're, we're giving you the way, the ability to filter into just certain scenarios that you want to capture. So let's say, hypothetically, I'm running a report for my hunt group 77280, and I'm going to give this report a run. We're going to take a look at some of the data. I'm going to tell you how these call scenarios are going to be able to help you whittle that total count down even more. So right now, what we can see is we've got 290 calls to my hunt group. Okay, and there's my number that I searched for right here. These are all the calls going to my hunt group. Now, anybody that's familiar with Cisco data, or even if you're not super familiar with Cisco data, one of the things that Cisco data does is it transfers calls, sends calls. When you call a hunt group, um, that call goes into a hunt group. That actually creates a call leg. 
Um, the hunt group is then going to send the call off to uh, a person that creates another call leg to the hunt group. So essentially what you have there just by searching a hunt group, a singular call is usually going to have two legs of a hunt group call. And we're going to take a look at that right now. So again, we can see in my report right here, I ran a simple report for my hunt group. I can have a total of 290 calls, 239 of those were answered, four of them were abandoned, but that doesn't make up 290. Um, so what are those other calls? And that was something that we saw a lot of people struggle with. And, and we have ways of working around that. Um, you know, we have with all of our customers by focusing in on just different cause codes, um, different number patterns that were dialed and things like that. So. The first thing we're going to go ahead and look at is some cradle to grave analytics. And I'm going to show you a little bit of why this count looks higher than our answered count and our banded count and our voicemail count. So by clicking out a cradle to grave leg, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and see here is we have essentially two calls. We have our caller calling in and going to the hunt group. We're going to count this twice because it's a call to the hunt group. Um, in this particular case, the call gets parked um, and they go to park for about 30 seconds and then come out from the hunt group to the end user who answered the call off of park. So essentially this is generating two different call counts. And I'm gonna flip through some other data and let's find some that aren't even parked. Let's go ahead and just flip through here. Here's a good example. So this is another call. This call bounced around several times using our cradle to grave, we can kind of see that. When we look at our total count, that 290 calls, here's a call to the hunt group. This is the hunt group receiving the call. So call manager creates a leg of the call when the, call, when the hunt group receives it by design so that way you can see the calls going to the hunt group where it's being presented from so next thing happens is the hunt group receives the call and then passes the call off to the user who answers the call and speaks for 58 seconds all right but again when we look at our total call count what we see is we see a call going to the hunt group and we see a call being received by the end user from the hunt group so we're seeing two different calls now, what we used to do previously is a lot of times we would isolate these calls by using different values. We may look at um, what consists of an answered call, the fact that it has duration, the fact that it was picked up by a user or duration and then picked up by a user. Um, we may have looked at the, the cause codes of normal call clearing. You know, Depending on your environment, there are a lot of different ways that we can manipulate that report to get the data that you are looking for. Um, but sometimes it got cumbersome. Um, hunt groups can be complicated. They could use round robin, they can use blast, they can roll to several different hunt groups and then roll back to themselves. Um, I've seen hunt groups that just hang up on people after a certain amount of rings. Um, so there's a lot of different things and a lot of different ways we had to kind of manipulate that data. So what I'm gonna show you here is a great example of how we can use these scenario types to not eliminate this leg completely. We still need it in our detail here, but eliminate this leg from our total count and get us a little bit closer to the actual number of calls that we're calling into the hunt group without having to rely on different cause codes and durations and various other fields that could, that could really pull that information. So hopping back over to my report, I'm simply searching right now for this particular hunt group. Again, keep in mind, this could be a department, this could be a series of operators, it doesn't matter, the process here would be the same. So we can see we have our 290 calls, 239 of them were answered, four of them were abandoned. And if we could go to voicemail, we would see some voicemail calls. And I also include our queued call count in here. Um, our queued call count is really indicative of the fact that we're using native call queuing on some of this uh, information. So you're gonna have those queued calls. Now I'm gonna show you how we can leverage some of that um, call scenario to whittle this number down and get a more accurate representation of one, how many calls came into that hunt group and then were answered, abandoned, or went to voicemail and we'll include those queued calls count, those queued calls as well. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop back over to my report and I'm just gonna go ahead and keep our same hunt group number in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and filter on my call scenarios. All right, so we're just simply gonna choose our call scenario types and click add. Now, we know when calls are going to a hunt group, we can see we have either answered calls, abandoned calls, or we're gonna have voicemail calls. Queued calls are always going to be answered because the queue is picking up the call. So this count is really already in our answered count. So what we're gonna do here is simply add our scenarios. We know we have answered, so we're gonna go ahead and add answered. We know we have abandoned calls, so we are gonna go ahead and add abandoned calls. And again, if your call manager or your phone system set up or your hunt group is set up or your department set up to be able to send calls to voicemail, I recommend adding voicemail in there also. So that way you're gonna get that voicemail count. So essentially what we've done is we've taken 
all of the data that we had here, and let me blow this guy back up a little bit, I know it shrinks down a little bit, and we've knocked it down to just the scenarios that our call uh, hunt group can handle. It can handle answered calls, abandoned calls, or voicemail calls. So when we rerun this report, you're gonna see we're gonna go down from 290 calls to, drum roll, any minute now, 243 calls. Now, if we look at our report, 239 answered calls plus our four abandoned calls equals 243 calls. So when I rerun this guy, essentially what we've taken it down is we've eliminated what we call connection legs. And we're gonna go ahead and examine those in the, in the, in the CDR. And this is a, a really a great way to be able to utilize some of these call scenarios. So let me blow this guy back up. There we go. And just pick on one of these guys here. And let's get, I'm going to move away from that park call because we talked about those. Those are going to be queued anyway. And let's go ahead and find a, here we go. This is a good hunt group call. So originally on my first report, we were counting this into our total count. Why? Because it matches our search. It's going to the hunt group. But now it's no longer orange. It's no longer part of our total count. Why? Because it is a not connected call. And when we built our report, we didn't include not connected calls. We only include the calls that would connect or are abandoned. So by eliminating that one leg, we've brought our count down to something much more accurate, a much more accurate representation of how many calls are actually coming into our hunt group. So that's another way to be able to utilize this and a great way to be able to really refine some of those reports. We have a lot of folks come to us and say, hey, you know what, we need the hunt group reports, we need the departmental reports, but we don't need all these transfer legs. We don't need all these non-connection legs. Um, they, they, they either clutter the report, they're hard to explain, they're hard to understand, and we get it. It's one of the reasons that we do what we do. It's one of the reasons that we added this field. So you can easily add and exclude fields that you want or don't want. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice here is that I am focusing in on this call scenario types column. Um, if you are not using this column, um, this has been a detailed column. We've had this for quite some time. To see it, all you need to do is simply add it to your report um, from the details section. And where did it go? There it is. It is call scenario types. You would see that in your show hide columns, or if you are editing an existing report, it's going to be in your call detail section. Um, what this does is it breaks down all of the different scenarios that a single call fits into. Okay, so when we look at this report or that report or any one of these reports, this is going to go ahead and break down each leg of the call and the scenario that it fits into. So as you're going through and you're trying to say, well, what, you know, what are the scenarios that I need? It's very imperative to be able to have this column because this is going to tell you what each particular leg of this call fits into from a scenario perspective, giving you the ability to say, oh, yep, I know I need answered. You know, I don't really need non connected because that's that connection leg, so I'm not going to add it. So it's a great way to be able to go ahead and one, visually see what categories your call records fit into, but then also use that call scenarios type to whittle those down and get a much more accurate portrayal of what your counts are. 239 plus 4 is 243. 243 calls were presented to this hunt group, 239 of those were answered, four of them were abandoned, 12 of those are queued calls. So, again, a great way to be able to use this. But there's plenty of more options to be able to use this to whittle things down. Um, one of the things I had talked about was people just saying, hey, you know what? I've got this hunt group report. I really just need to see what these four abandoned calls. Maybe I'm running a report on an end user um, and they're saying, no, you know, I received all of my calls or no, I answered all of my calls. Um, sometimes you really need to be able to get into the data and see just the calls that, that you're questioning. So besides looking at all of the different scenarios like we are now, I can easily say, hey, you know what? Just show me those four abandoned calls. Search for that uh, call scenario. You no, have, no longer have to go through the data and pick multiple fields just to find abandoned. You can now filter that down just easily by picking that abandoned scenario and being able to show just those four abandoned calls. All right. So same thing, this applies across the board. So when I say 15.1's got a little bit for everything, this is not just for call manager analytics. The same information can be used for WebEx analytics or Zoom analytics or Cube analytics. So you have that same functionality across the board for all of the supported platforms. And that does go across to dashboards.
So again, nice thing about this is when we start to build out those dashboards, we have a lot of folks, and if you, if, if you haven't already seen it, we're going to be doing some webinars in July regarding a lot of people trying to build those kind of contact center-esque dashboards, um, uh, you know, using uh, Verify Analytics, but using Hunt Groups, not, not having contact center. So this type of information flows right into that, where, you know what, I don't have a ton of abandoned calls, but I really want to see which ones are getting abandoned. So from a dashboard perspective, I simply created, uh, again, focusing in on my hunt group and using that call scenario to focus in on just those abandoned calls. And I've got a great detail widget here that I can see in near real time um, how many abandoned calls I have and what each of those abandoned calls did and where it went to and how long they were there. So in this case, I could see I had a user that is sitting in the care or while ringing my hunt groups for about 55 seconds before they decided to abandon that call. That's a great metric. That's a metric that you want to see once you start putting these things together, because again, now we're focusing in on just those abandoned calls. We can go ahead and add different summary type metrics in there. We can add different scenarios. We can add different computed ring times. Um, and things like that to be able to go ahead and get those total volumes, those total calls, and that computed or average ring time of how long people are willing to wait before they disconnect those calls. Not using a contact center, but giving you a lot of that contact center-esque type information by simply using those scenarios to focus in on what you want to see, not have to dig through everything to find it. All right. So, uh, Dre, I think that's all I got. Do we have any questions? I saw some, some blue pop-ups popping up in the corner over there. Yeah. Yeah. Great job, by the way. Uh, we got a couple here. Um, the first one is asking when will 15 one go to GA uh, It's from Jeremy. Jeremy, it will be out tomorrow. Um, and so I have a link to that at the end of the presentation. That's going to be verified dot com slash support slash download. Um, let us know if you have any of the further questions about that. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Kruger is asking, what is the difference between abandoned and not connected? Sure. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the data. That's an excellent question. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a report here, and well, let's go. Let's find a let's find a good not connected call. Hunt groups are perfect examples of that. So when a call comes in, um, and I'm going to use hunt group as an example, but this could be a route point. This could be something that is usually automating uh, some type of routing of your calls. Um, when a call comes in, it goes to the hunt group. The hunt group receives that call. Um, it's not connected to any type of device. It's not connected to any type of user. And if we have to take a look at the data and want to dig down to it, you'll also notice that there is no connection time on this call. So because of the fact that there is no connection time, essentially what is happening is that hunt group is merely just routing that call off to end users, creating what's called a not connection leg because it's not necessarily connecting it to any type of device, any type of phone, any type of user. Um, it's simply passing that call through. There is no connection being placed um, and it goes down to the end user. So not connected is different, but abandoned is also not connected, okay? So let's say, for example, I'm calling out and I'm ringing an end user and that call is abandoned. And you know what? Let's, let's use our new uh, scenario here to look at a, a perfect example. So what we have here is you can see that there is no connection time on an abandoned call, but we also see that the end users are disconnecting these calls. And this is, again, part of the power of having call scenarios. Previously, we would have to filter down to several different pieces of information, um, being the cause codes, being the daytime connects and things like that to filter out just these four calls. But being able to just pick it, I can see that I have a normal call clearing. This is also going to be a abandoned call and not connected. We know it's an abandoned call because we see the call come in. We see that it has no connection time. We also see that the person calling in is disconnecting the call. So that's how we are dictating what is considered an abandoned call. So I hope that helps. Um, I know that can be confusing, but the easiest way to think about non-connected are kind of pass-through legs. Calls that really just get forwarded off from one point to another through some type of automated routine, or ultimately, as well as abandoned calls are considered not connected. Nice thing about that call scenario is it is going to go ahead and show you both if it is abandoned and the scenario that it is counted under. Awesome. Thanks, Vic. They, uh, <laughs> they had a second question about that. Um, sure. Would a ring no answer also fall under uh, either abandoned or not connected? Uh, yes. So that's that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> ring no answer, but does it go to somebody else and get answered? Um, you know, like, uh, in, for example, a hunt group. Um, maybe it rings into me um, and I don't answer it. It, it rings down to Trey. Um, in that case, that's not abandoned because it's basically it's getting answered by Trey. Um, 
if it rings to me um, and I don't answer it and voicemail does not pick up, that would be considered an abandoned call. All right. So it really comes down to the scenario in which you're talking about. And that's why I say it's a loaded question, because a lot of different things can happen in a phone system. But when we're talking about hunt groups and things like that, when calls roll to different people, um, if it gets answered, it's not going to be considered abandoned. But in this case, these calls rolled to various people or they rang. They did not get answered. But ultimately, the person calling in disconnected. That is why it's being abandoned or considered abandoned. So a standard ring no answer that goes to voicemail or something like that is not going to be considered an abandoned call. All right. Well done. All right. We got one more question here. <clears throat> also from Jonathan. He's asking, what does the transfer from and transfer to really mean? Sure. Um, so that's a, that's a good question. So let's go ahead and uh, use some of the time. I know we've got about five minutes here. Um, let's pick on some of those calls. We have transfer from, and let's look at those results. Oh, you know what? Let's see if I have any from my from my hunt group here. If not, we can pick on a wider range of information. And eh, we got a few of them. All right. So let's go ahead and run a report on these. I'm going to include the call detail, and these can be tricky um, because a call that is transferred from and or transferred to um, has multiple transfer to or transfer froms. Um, and let's see if we can find a good example here. Oh, let me blow this up so everybody can see it. And uh, again, this is this is something we'll spend as much time as we can on here. Um, but keep in mind, I think we do have a webinar out there that talks a little bit about these scenarios and things like that. So that's always something that you can check out as well. Um, but let's take a look at it. So this call is transferred from, all right? This call came from another entity. OK, but you'll also notice that this is a transfer from because these are all coming from different entities where this call right here on the bottom is now we have a end user transferring uh, or the hunt group transferring to a different person. So now you can see that this is transferred to. In other words, this call, this particular leg of the call was transferred to this person. These over here were transferred from different entities. So it's very common you're going to have a transfer from and a transfer to in the middle here because and this, I know this gets tricky because this call is both being transferred from a previous entity, but also being transferred to somebody else. Um, so it came from here, but it's also transferring to a different entity. So I know those can be extremely confusing because of the way calls flow. Each one of these is technically really a transfer from or transfer to a different entity and it will contain both of those values depending on what's in what's involved in other words here i have a caller getting over to this number well how did they get to this number they got transferred from this case this particular phone over here and or in this case it's a uccx uh, but they got transferred from the uccx queue over to the user so it is transferred from the user um, but in the same time, it is also transferred to. Why? Because it came from the UCCX. So there's a bit of redundancy when we talk about transfer to and transfer from, because any call that's kind of in the middle is a little bit of both. It's being transferred from one entity, but it's also transferring to another entity. Um, and I know that can be confusing, and I, it, that is something that I want to do another webinar on, um, because those can be a little bit misleading when people are saying, hey, I just want to see all the calls that were transferred to this particular person. Yep, I can easily come in and filter on transfer to. It's going to give me all of these legs, but you're also going to see some legs in the middle, because technically, these were transferred to this person from a different entity. All right, so I know that can be a bit confusing. Um, that's kind of the, the, you know, the short version and the amount of time we have. And I know there can be some overlap from transfer from and transfer to. It's not necessarily overlap. Each one of these particular legs that we see here is part of a different transfer from or to a different entity, all the way until we get to that last leg of the call, which is the recipient of the final transfer. Yeah. All right, awesome, Vic. And thanks for taking that extra time to go over that with us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take over the screen sharing now so we can announce yep. the winner and Stop send everybody off. All right, everybody. So um, the moment we've all been waiting for, <laughs> the winner for the Amazon gift card today is Justin Storm. Justin Storm, thanks for attending. We'll be reaching out uh, in regards to that gift card. Congratulations. Uh, and thank you again. All right, everybody, so some quick announcements before we head out. There will not be a scheduled workshop next week as we'll be catching up for or from the 4th of July, 4th of July holiday break. Uh, Verify workshops will resume on July 12th. 
That one will be targeted towards the WebEx report templates and everything you need to know about those. So don't miss out, a lot of exciting stuff. Also, uh, finally, if you are not already aware or if you happen to join in late today, Verify 15.1 is set to release tomorrow, June 29th. You can get access to all the new features we've covered over the last month, such as these call scenario search types, the real-time hunt group widget, and much, much more. So don't miss out. Again, the download for that update can be found on verify.com slash support slash download. Thanks again, everybody. With that, I'll con conclude today's webinar. Um, thank you again. Feel free to add us on LinkedIn. We'd love to connect with you and have a great rest of your week.